worship the Lord your God and he will take away diseases God builds a hedge around your life with your God. Jesus is able to purify you has lifted very very many young people and I pray that these people may understand the power in the gospel that they may become demonstrators of the power of the gospel hallelujah now in Romans chapter 8 and verse 3 Romans chapter 8 and verse 3 the Bible says for what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by sin of nature God did by sending his own son in the likeness of a sin of man to be a sin offering the Bible says what the law was powerless to do it never remained undone. It was done. There is something that the law was powerless to do. Of course, it was powerful to do other things. The law was not all powerless. It had power to kill. But it had no power to change your life. The God said, because I want my child's life to be changed, I'm going to send my own son. And today my wife spoke about it. Jesus came to do what nobody else could do. And today as we are seated, something has been done. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Something has been done. God had given a law before Jesus was born. And the law lasted 1,500 years. How many years? 1,500 years. God was patient, expecting that one time this law can do something to change a man's life. And the Bible says the law became incapable to do anything. How did God know that the law was not able to do anything? When God looked at man, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8, God found a mistake in a man. Those men that were sick remained to be sick. Those that were separated remained to be separated. Those that were poor remained poor. And God said, I did not want them to remain poor. I did not want them to remain sick. I am going to do something that will heal them. Something that will change their prosperity scale. And God sent his side. Today we are living in a generation when Jesus has come. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. When nothing changed in a man, it means that the law had a mistake. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 7. It says, for if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place could have been sought for another. In other words, if the law had made man better, God could have not sent Jesus. If the law had given you, had taken you out of poverty, God could have not sent Jesus. Today, Jesus is around and he's busy taking people out of poverty. Hallelujah. God blesses you for a reason. And the reason is simple. To manifest his kingdom. He, he has set before you a time. And that time is not without a purpose. For the Bible says God calls us according to his purpose. Hallelujah. And therefore God has called you. God is here, has healed you of HIV for a reason. It's not for decoration. No. It's healing you for assignment. You have got to rise up and take responsibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the law. The Bible says in uh, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 18. That the law was weak and powerless. But Jesus is not weak and is not powerless. 
For he was able to do that which the law was unable to do. He's able. Everyone say he's able. He's able. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is some kind of change that God wanted to see in a man. And he gave the law, but he did not see the change. But when he gave Jesus, even, even at the announcement that Jesus is coming, change already occurred. People were already turning to God through the announcement of John. John was saying, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And people were already asking, what can we do? He said, those who are corrupt, stop being corrupt. Those who are stealing, stop stealing. But by the coming of Jesus, the announcement alone started changing things. When, when the law came, people started dying. But when Jesus was coming, people started repenting. Don't you see the difference? Yes. Hallelujah. There's some kind of change that God expected to see in you. And when I look at you, I can, I can clearly say that the change has not yet occurred. But I cannot be ashamed to say that the change will occur. In a little while, it will come to pass. That drinking husband will change. That drinking wife will change. That fighting family will change. That perfect scale will change. If I'm talking to someone, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when Jesus came, he found the Pharisees, the scribes, and the teachers of the law in the synagogue, inside the same synagogue, with a lot of sick people. Then Jesus started healing them on Sabbath. Because when the law came, the sick became sicker. The poor became poorer. The oppressed were even more oppressed. So when Jesus came, he said, ah, this is not what my father wanted. My father wanted the sick to be healed. My father wanted the poor to be rich. And then he said, my father wanted to see families united. My father wanted to see people living better lives. But now this law has made nothing better. But the Bible says now a better hope has been introduced with which we draw near to God. And the better way is Jesus. A better way. So when Jesus came, he found things were in a mess. There was no order. And the Bible says he started healing the sick. He went from one village to another healing the sick. He, he cast out devils. The law was existing with the devils. The demons were existing. One time Jesus got into a synagogue on a Sabbath day. And he found a young daughter from Abraham. He said, you are sick. And, and, and the, 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 the Pharisees were watching and said, let us see what he can do. And Jesus went and healed the young girl. He said, this is from Abraham and she deserves to be healed. And I've come to tell you, you deserve something better. You deserve something better. Hallelujah. 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 Now when Jesus came, he said this in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. When he came, he said this. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Those who have testified, whenever people testify, they ask about me, which kind of man is this? I can tell you like Elijah said, Elijah was a man like you, but the spirit of the father was upon him. I am a man like you, but the healing spirit is in my life. I am just like you. But the Lord in his faith and grace. Deposited his healing spirit. A life giving spirit. The words I speak are led by the same spirit. And it's the healing spirit of the Lord. Glory. He said this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me 
to preach good news to the poor. Every poor person sees that here. Your good news has come. Your good news has come. You shall prosper after today in the name of Jesus. You shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Anybody under oppression, I have come to announce your freedom. Anybody under any kind of oppression, be it financial oppression, family oppression, be it any manner of oppression, I have been sent by the Spirit of God today to announce your freedom in the name of Jesus. And they said, and recovery of sight for the blind. There are people that cannot see. Their vision is no more. They had the focus and the vision. They had where they were going. They are no longer moving there. They have said, we, we are about to die. I've come to tell you. That vision shall be recovered in the name of Jesus. Some of you had given up. You are no longer interested in building that house. The plan is in the house, but you are not building it. Listen to me. You are building it again in the name of Jesus. The Lord be to Jesus. And to release the oppressed. Some of you are manipulated by the devil. Every night you are oppressed by dreams. You see dead people. You see yourself dying. Every time you see you are attending a funeral. You are under spiritual oppression. God is saying he's going to recover you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll be released. Yes. I repeat to say this. You'll be released. Yes. You'll be released. Yes. No matter the kind of oppression you'll be raised in the name of Jesus. I know you are, you say we are living in difficult times. The times may be very difficult, but you cannot be crushed because the Jesus that you carry is better. Is better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus is more honorable than Moses. Is better. Moses brought the children of Israel from Egypt, taking them to Canaan. But he himself never arrived in Canaan. But Jesus is studying the children of God from the cross going to heaven. But he himself is seated in heaven. That's a remarkable difference. And he, and he says, in my father's home, there are many mansions. I will take you there so that where I am, you also shall be. You also shall be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus is better. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 3 that Jesus has received more honor than Moses. Because Moses started with the people. But he never entered Canaan. He told them where they were going together. But he himself did not go in. But Jesus said, I am taking you to heaven. Where my father is. And as I speak, everybody knows he's in heaven. They even literally saw him in Galilee as he was ascending. And the Bible says, the same Jesus you have seen go will come in like manner. He said, I'm coming for you. I am coming to take you to be where I am. What a trustable and a friend we have in Jesus. Give him all the glory this morning. I have just come to magnify the Savior, the King of Kings, the healer, the redeemer, the, 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 the one that makes people rich. Lift up your hands and magnify his holy name. Worship him and magnify him. Honor him this hour. Let your voice magnify him. Yeah. Magnify him. Yes. 
Christ, Lord, we bless your name. You are better in the bath. You are better than the best. As you are standing, as you are standing, listen to this. I'm just reading for you some verses to see the difference between Jesus and any other person. I'm just reading as my final book for today. John chapter 8 and verse 3. Can, can you listen? Always learn to pay attention. John 8 verse 3. When you be seated at home, go to our YouTube. You'll find the same message there. Our service is already in. So as you leave going home, be checking, you will find it there. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees <coughs> brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? According to the law, by now she's supposed to be dead. What do you say? Verse 11. The woman replied, No, sir, she said. Then Jesus said, Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and live your city of life. She was supposed to be dead. But because Jesus is a life giver, instead he gave her life. <laughs> Many of us, we are enjoying a second opportunity, a second life, just because of Jesus. <laughs> People had already made up their mind to kill us a long time ago. From the witches, from family members, those who don't like you from your spouses. They had committed in their heart to kill you. But the invisible Jesus showed up and made a contrary decision to their expectation. You are alive to serve him. Lift up your hand and let me pray. Father, we are alive today by your power and your grace. I know what society must have said. I know what friends must have said. I know what the law wanted to happen to me. But I stand to glorify your name. I magnify you, Son of God. The life I live today is courtesy of your intervention. And I pray that there are people in this meeting that require the intervention of God. I pray, Father, that you intervene in their situation. Their case is becoming worse. But with your intervention, they shall overcome. As they go back home, let them walk with the hope and joy that God in heaven has had my case and he's he has intervened for my, my safety. I pray for their life. That they live a life that magnifies you. My father. We are all your children. Some worst things happen. People make judgment about us. But you have the final word. I pray that your word may sustain our life today. In Jesus name I pray. Amen.
watch the powerful and uplifting sermons live on YouTube channel every Saturday. From now going forward, nobody in this church is dying before the time in Jesus' name. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscription button on the right. For all prayer requests and information, call the number on the screen. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4 My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. Gospel Embassy Network TV The place to feed on heavenly bread.